Hey guys, it's Lucid. Welcome back. Got another turn for you here with uh, Nautheim. It's going to be an interesting one. Um, there's a few things. One is that uh, the the player uh, who was playing United Nations Junior, uh, that player has left. Well, they had left and they got a sub and they've come back now. So um, this turn that you're going to see was played out by the sub, but this is the last turn the sub did. Now, uh, <laughs> I had to wait to talk with the new player because he had kind of messaged me saying, hey, I'm coming back, and I have a, ba a vague sense of how things have gone in my absence. Uh, do you want to make peace? And he said it in a kind of funny way. He said, uh, I'm, I'm kind of busy. I started two other games, and I don't have time to be at war with you. But I think if I go to war with you, I'm probably going to lose if I don't have time to put like a million hours into every turn. And if I don't go to war with you, then I'll probably lose. But I don't really have time to go to war. So I, I don't know. However he said it, he, he was into peace. But he also kind of was like giving up. But, you know, if, if you're going to lose, you, you got to give up at some point. Uh, that said, uh, we're going to talk extensively about it because crazy things happen in the turn and then also kind of in diplomacy. Um, so we have a few assassinations. We'll go through it. Um, if I killed the assassin, I'll actually watch. I think I might have had Jim Use turned off. No, I think I just got enough undead. Oh, man. That's pretty good. Here we killed another one. These Thumbturks do okay, I guess, against a disease demon if they roll a fair number of bodyguards. This just isn't going to go well. Um, he, This is a, the lake province. I had sent two dryads with some water gear to summon water elementals and take the lake. And uh, he thought he could mind hunt them. Oh no, we had a, a Shambler Skin Shadow Seer in there. Um, here he's doing an Earth Elemental to take out a Jotun Scout. Uh, Citadel of Power was created in Nautheim. So I'll just show you that. We now have a new and improved fort. Uh, it comes with higher admin, 60, if you compare that to our other forts. Uh, our other forts rock 30, so this is significantly more. Uh, you can see we're getting 800 income in our in our cap, which is not bad at all. Um, I'm trying to think, if we go to Nazmore, I don't think, I don't know, Nazmore has a pretty good cap too. But anyway, uh, it, that was a nice bonus, but also I now get uh, a fair amount of Eagle King production. Um, so next turn I'll click this again and get another Eagle King. Um, More Earth Elementals. The Earth Attacks, we don't do very well, even if we have Long Dead. If we get like three... It, oh, here's a Disease Demon. This one didn't work. So you can see it's hit or miss with the Disease Demons. We got another Citadel of Power. Here, this is with our Eagle King. That's kind of interesting. I think he had pretty good gear. Yeah. And he has Chest Armor. He may get diseased. We'll see. Fortunately, that shock shield is gonna. There we go. It's gonna get him. Um. It's the Eagle King. Uh, then they send a bunch of horrors. Uh, we oddly in this forest, we just had a nature one mage we got there from a site, and so we had him site search. It was uh. It was, it was somebody else's forest, and it turns out they had never site-searched it for nature, which is kind of funny. And then here in the ocean, we had an astral guy site-search. He found an abandoned lab in a spiral shaft. Which is pretty nice. Spiral shaft gives us plus one S. So our astral income is kind of ridiculous. 38 is really high. Um, blood economy is going pretty smoothly. Um, and then we had an assassination attempt. We had a bla the Black Terror, which is a, a hero, I think, for Patalar or Bandarlog or somebody. And uh, 
Yeah, he's pretty good. Summon some skeletons, runs in, and smacks the shit out of you. Kind of scary. Um, so he killed him. We got a Vetti Hag. Nothing to write home about there, but then here we ran into a Troll Sethbender. And this guy has a Storm Staff. Pretty good gear. Uh, all sorts of stuff, really. Like, this is not going to be easy. Because he's probably going to self-buff. Yeah, Body Ethereal, so Trample's not going to do much. And then Swarm's coming in, but I think he has Poison Resistance. Oh, no, he doesn't. He just has Regen. And the Ice Elemental's going to freeze the bugs. The Water Elemental's definitely better with, uh, with the bugs. Not only is it better at, in just in general, but this is going to freeze all the bugs. You can see they're all frozen. Now, this guy's frozen too, because he does not have cold resistance. Get another set of bugs out. Now, his morale uh, has failed, so if he wakes up, he's going to run. I don't know how he's taking damage, actually. Let's hit that real quick. How is he? Oh, it's this thing. Yeah. This thing's getting... It's actually really funny. Um, I would have actually lost this assassination. I'm going to win. But I think... Yeah, he, he ends up killing this with... Uh, like, we're spamming out Frozen Heart. There's a chance we would have just killed him with Frozen Heart. But... I probably should have done... Um, what do you call it? I probably should have gotten myself cold resistance because that would affect my fatigue a fair amount. The elemental fortitude. But he's going to wake up and then he runs. That's just a weird assassination. If he didn't, oddly enough, if he didn't have that, uh, the, the, the shock amulet, he may have actually won. Um... Yeah, I think for Dryad spam, it's probably, it's a, it's a little anti-synergistic with going cold. But, I mean, I did get the Mercury Barrels, so those are fine. Um, we're going to skip through some of these. It's really late over here. I wanted to record it before the, the turn posted and get my kind of thoughts, my live reaction, rather than... Uh, repeating it back to you because there's some crazy stuff that happens. We've got a lot of battles. We're just we'll skip through these kind of quick. So we raid. Um, here we're just pinging. Um, we get attacked here by uh, two said lords. Uh, I'll show you where these guys are. This is right here. So we're gonna mind hunt that. But thing is, there were a lot of Eddie hags around here. There's a pretty good chance. That there's a stealthy Vetti Hag, but there also might not be. Killing him, I'm gonna, I think I'm only gonna do it twice. And there's two of them here, so I probably should do it like four times, but I'm not really feeling it. Okay, um, we run into an Anaria Poland here with our Scrotty. And this is the guy who won in the arena, and so he got the uh, the champion's trident, which gives him quickness and luck. Um, and he also has his arena gear, which is basically lifelong protection, a living bottle of water. Good luck killing this guy in the arena, that's all I have to say. Does he have... Yeah, he has pretty good armor. I wonder if some of these imps are gonna run back here. Got a console. Oh, you're in trouble now. Okay. 
That was kind of cool little battle. And then coming down here, we get raided by a Lamer console. Here. Um, we'll just watch this real quick. Pompeii versus, I forget, who is this? I can't hold my mouse over it. See. But these Dans are going to do some work. It's basically uh, tower guards. Wait, what the fuck happened? Looks like they sniped the commander. I haven't actually seen this battle before. There's just one commander and they got sniped. Huh. How about that? Whoops. I think they might have actually won. I'm not sure. I have no idea how that would have gone. It's a problem with mage, little mages leading a lot of troops. Okay, we got a couple provinces back. Here we clear out some barbs. Um, coming down, we bump into some UN forces. And again, we kill so much of his stuff every turn. These are, if the average price of these is like 15 gold, because these are 20, these are 10, and these are 15, then, yeah, 300 bucks. Uh, and then this is kind of funny. We run our white mage into these guys. I mean, he's their white mage with a little bit of our gear. And they, they hit him with this before he can really finish his script, which is unfortunate, because we didn't get temper flesh or anything else. Uh, but he did get Phoenix Pyre and Iron Skin, which is kind of the criteria here. Uh, but he's now gotten so afflicted, he's not going to be terribly useful. Um, so we're going to have to probably do like a Fire Gem on him every time to get him to Phoenix Pyre. But we killed a fair amount of stuff. We got more of these idiots and more of these idiots. So if we killed 40 guys and the average price is like 12, then, I don't know, about 500 bucks. Plus one of their, their captains. Plus we took the province, Pamal. Um, coming down here, this is our main army that just took Basanji's capital, and they're marching forward. They bumped into some PD. And then this is what I want to show you. So he decided to move, and this is the, the crux of what happened this turn. He moved, well, not the crux, but part, the, the key part of the crux. Uh, he moved this big stack on top of my throne. Now, why is this important? Well, uh, I would think this army here would be able to handle it. Um... But maybe not. One of the problems is they cast Howl, and I don't have people on Guard Commander, so that Howl is going to be very effective at fucking my dudes. And then he's also got some of these guys who flew back here, and they are killing uh, various parts of my communion. Um, and they've now gotten a lot of them. To the point, and I don't know if this is what happens, because I think it actually is, yeah. I think they've gotten all of my commanders who are not communion slaves. The hearse is dead, which is my commander from the province. Slave, 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 slave. Yeah, I think that's what happens. I think my guys are going to start dissolving.
Though I don't know if because these guys are slaves, if it still counts. It may still count. So we're also dealing with some skelly spam from their side, and then a fair amount of banishment. By the way, we killed the Eagle Warriors, but it's not good. Not good. So our guys are hauling ass off. So there's that. We'll, we'll speed through the rest of these. Raid, and Vesuvian Titan raiding. Um, Okay, and that's basically it. Um, so here's the thing. He's killed my army guarding this. Like th this was everything I had in there, basically. They were patrolling. And I thought I'd be okay, but him taking out a significant portion of the communion, I think they didn't get some of the key buffs off too, because uh, it got taken out pretty early. So that was bad. Now, the problem is, is this. This is the problem. 390 dudes. I assume there's a ton of mage support. There's a lot of mages in here. Um, and if he takes this, he's already at fourth runes. He needs six to win. So this will be throne five. And then this throne right over here is not forded. And he has teleporting holy threes. Like, I mean, he has lots of teleporting stuff. He's got his star spawn who can teleport. He's got Sita who can teleport just by moving. Bad news. So I sound the alarm. I'm like, in the, the game chat when this turn posted, I was like, guys, we've got some bad news. The game might end in like three turns. Because he can move this on, it would crack it. And then if he takes it, which I'm obviously not going to try to let him do, um then we're going to be in bad shape. The risky part is if I kill this, he's going to be in some shit. Now, the thing with that is... Well, well there's a few things with that. One of the things with that is I can nuke it with Murdering Winner this turn and next turn. And if I nuke it this turn, he's not going to have enough, I don't think, to to one turn crack the fort. So it would be a two turn crack. I could have more dryads inside. Um, yeah, it's also kind of an all in. But I think honestly, I think the the sub who was doing this move, I think this was probably the best chance at winning. Getting this throne and then throne rushing down here and taking that. I think that's this guy's best chance at winning. So um, that said, I don't think he's going to be able to throw and rush me. Even if if I didn't nuke it this turn, if I only nuke it next turn, I'm going to have a lot in position because I'm bringing everybody. Like, if we look at everybody I've got coming in here, I'm bringing a huge fucking army. I'm going to have three Eagle Kings. I'm going to have a bunch of Scrotty, which actually I need to double check. Yeah, these guys are actually sneaking inside. Oh. Why are you sneaking there? Jesus Christ. Um, I don't think we're bringing these guys. I don't think we need them. But anyway, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna use Scruddy as slaves. I'll probably use them as thugs, like super combatant thugs and communion masters. Um, Probably move him here. That's probably okay. Um, the thing is, so we have to think about it. Well, there's a few things. One is, before we kind of go down this path, the new player got in and was like, hey, actually, let's just make peace. And I'm like, okay. Now, I don't completely trust him. I mean, 
I tr want to trust him. I think the player in general is a trustworthy player. But he's potentially three turns away from winning. Um, which obviously we're not going to try to let happen. But um, yeah, I would, I would never put it past anybody to like be like, hey, let's be friends. And then that's going to keep me from like, Magic phasing, messing with him this turn. And then next turn, like, he's basically got me completely unprepared because I didn't react this turn, and it's, like, good game. So there's a few things we're going to be doing. We're basically going to be playing it not 100% because I'm not going to murder and winner his army this turn because we did agree to peace. The terms of the peace are he gets these two provinces. Otherwise, I get everything along this line if you draw this line out. Uh, but he gets these two. And then we basically go back to pre-war borders, excluding the fort I've taken up here. Um, so that's basically the peace deal. Now, uh, he and so he's going to pull stuff back. But if he doesn't, we're still in like full full alarm. So everybody coming in here, we, they're on move and patrol. Um... We've got kind of full scripts going off. I don't know if I'm doing mass region, which I probably should do. I do have, let's double check a few things. Actually, no, I, I really didn't script this very well. Okay, this guy's doing divine blessing, power of the sepulcher. Okay, no, this guy's doing some of the basic stuff. But yeah, he totally could send me a cheeky message next turn, like, psych, I tricked you into making peace, now you're going to lose. Um, Frostfend, Grip of Winter, I don't really have darkness, which I feel like I would want. I'll just, I'll just take you and give you... Okay. Because why am I making sure we're patrolling here? Well, there's a few reasons. The main one is that uh, if if indeed he does go for a throne rush, he's going to want to pin this fort down. And I cannot let him pin the fort down. Absolutely cannot. So that's that. Now he's been, this is where basically all these assassinations have been targeted. And he's trying to keep me from reinforcing the throne. And I basically explained this to everybody in game chat. So um, other people are kind of making some preparations in case the throne rush goes. And I'm not going to tell anybody that we're, we've made some kind of peace and that um, the throne rush is not happening until next turn when I... This is the thing, guys. It's like, naps are great and all, but actions speak louder than words. So see what other players do, and don't put too much faith in what they say. Especially in a case like this. So, yeah. Uh, we're going to patrol here. We've got Fog Warriors going off. And then Summon Storm Power, and then Elementals. We've also got... Um, Wait, we've got doing that. Were we doing that twice? Okay, let's start at the bottom. Thunder Ward, Fog Warriors. Clearly, something is wrong with my scripting here. Uh, where's my Tipper Flesh? Okay, first Eagle King. Who did I give the Storm Staff to? I thought I gave it to one of these idiots. But apparently I didn't, question mark. Wait, did I do the Storm Staff up here? Oh, I think I kept it on... I must not have given this guy a move command. 
That's exactly what I didn't do. See, this is the good thing that comes with doing my videos, because I'd be like, where the fuck is Storm? Oh, it's on the guy that I didn't give command to. Okay, so where's the Storm Staff guy? Um, yeah, okay, so summon Storm hour, Power and then summon Storm or summon our Elementals. Now, highly unlikely we actually bump into anybody here, because he would have to A, continue on with his plan, and B, try to lock this down. But if he doesn't lock this down, we're going to have a nasty Doom stack, which we can use to kick him off here. Um, so we'll see. We will see. Um, the other thing we're going to prepare for is that he is going to take this army and to march it through here and come down and secure this, because, like, he could... This is what I was thinking he was going to do is he has this army here, he moves this on t on top, next turn this is cracked. So next turn this is cracked, turn after he storms. So uh, next turn he's on top, turn after he leaves and moves over here. Um, turn after he moves down here, because this is frozen, he can actually do that. And then that will be protecting this from some kind of crazy attack I do. And then this would be within range of, like, Wizard Tower or something. So that's what I think his play is. Going yoink, yoink, yoink. So anyway, we are patrolling with everything we got here and basically the same deal. Uh, Thunderfin Fog Warriors. Mass Regen. Rush of Strength. I'm not doing... This guy's doing Life After Death. Ugh. I'm not doing um, any kind of, like, morale play here, really. That's not a bad idea. But uh, that's basically it. We're patrolling this. Anyway, we have scripts for that. We're piecing the fuck out of here and here. Um, The final thing we're doing is we're moving two assassins here. Uh, and that is just in case he goes for... Uh, this throne this next turn, we can do something about it. Um, probably won't do anything, I'll probably just move him back. If he moves his troops out, I'm going to get so many fucking dryads in this throne. It's going to be a pipe dream for him to take it from me now. Um, I think all my thrones are pretty well. This one's kind of weak. That one's pretty strong. This one was strong until he killed the army on top of it. But the real problem I think that I'm dealing with, and I'm I th I'm past the break even point on it, but like when he's doing ten remote assassinations turn, you know, like I can't I have to build that many commanders, so it's it's tough. Um. Yeah, once I have all these things forted, we'll obviously be able to do that more. But for now, it's a problem. Uh, for Earth Attack, you need an Earth 5 Mage and it's 5 Earth Gems. So he's spending a fair amount. I mean, 1, 2, 3. Just doing 15 Earth Gems a turn. Kind of worth it, I guess, if it gives him a throne win. Oh. Sorry for being yawning, guys. That's it's my bedtime. But anyway, uh, that's basically it for the turn. Oh, one last thing. Uh, I was going to do use uh, uh, Pedosian. I always said Poseidon, but that's obviously not who it is. But whoever this guy is, um, I was going to use him to steal riches from beneath, because I just the way it had been going, and especially if he was going for a throne rush. I just have to kill this guy's economy. He's just throwing so much shit at me. Um, and I thought all these losses I've been inflicting were like going to make him stop, but I guess he feels able to like continually re replace all these guys. And the the only reason that would be is Richard's from beneath. So if I steal that, then he can't do that, and it will obviously be good for me. Problem with stealing it 
is it's going to put a big target on my back and potentially these guys could chill out but I, you know looking at it I don't I'm really, I mean they're pretty close to the point where it'd be very hard for them to untangle themselves from this war but they're not quite there if if they take a little bit more of each, like if if he takes a if Theridos gets a little little farther, then I think we'll be at that point where I don't really have to worry about them ganging up on me. But if he gets too far, which I don't know how much farther he could be without being too far. If he gets too far, then he's actually going to be able to attack me. So I'm not sure. The safe move is I steal Earthblood Deepwell from Theridos when I have like 300 Earth Gems. And then once I have this, then I can control that. Um, but he could theoretically like overcast this from me, but it doesn't really make sense for Theratos to want to do that. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, I gotta make sure I send him gems too. I forgot to do that. Okay. Uh, I'm also sending 10 nature gems to Dot. He's going to send me some water, which... It's just in case I have to do Murdering Winter again. Um, but I think that's it, guys. That's the turn. It's my bedtime. I will see you guys next time.